Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian, and today I'm going to be taking you through one of Flower's Excel actions called Get Rows from Excel. Now, when you're using Flower's Excel actions, your data in Excel it doesn't need to be in a table. So that means you can start to add rows, get rows, and start to work with data in your less structured Excel files. So let's go ahead and take a look at the solution today. So this is my Excel file. It's called Supplier Notes, and it's just a place for employees to come in and quickly add any updates regarding suppliers. We can see that the data is in an unstructured format. It's not in a table, and that's because it is just a notes Excel. It's just somewhere to come in and quickly amend and make changes as updates come in regarding suppliers. So my scenario for today is that at the end of each day or at the end of every few days, Someone needs to come through and have a look. And if the status of a supplier has been set to information needed, an email needs to be sent to that supplier, including the notes that have been provided, so that that needed information can be requested from the primary contact for that supplier. So we're going to look at how this can start to be an automated process with a power automate coming in, getting the data, looking at the status and automating the email, including that notes column. So let's take a look at the flow. So this is my flow. So my flow is manually triggered, but in real life, it would actually make more sense to have this as a scheduled flow to schedule at the end of each day or however often you're going to need to be checking the data in the Excel. My Excel file is saved to OneDrive. So I'm just going and getting the file content using the files path because nothing's going to change. It's going to always stay the same. Once I've got my file content, I can then use this as an input into the get rows from Excel action. So this is using the file content from the step before and there's a few different options when using this action. If your Excel file has different worksheets but you only want to get the data from one of them, you can go ahead and specify which worksheet your data lies in. So my Excel file, yes, it wasn't in a structured table format. However, it still did have a header row, just labeling what each column was. So I'm going to click yes, this does have a header row. You can also limit the data that comes back. So you can limit the data between rows and between columns. So if you know that the data that you need to extract is only between say column two and column five, you can do this to limit the amount of data being pulled into your Power Automate so that it's not going to affect any efficiencies further down the line. You can also say whether you want to exclude empty rows and empty cells if you don't want them being brought back. And you can say how you want your values to be brought back, whether you want them to be brought back as values or as text. And the same with your hyperlink format too. You can say what hyperlink you'd like. So after we've gone ahead and got our data, this comes back in a JSON format. So we can go ahead and pop this into the pass JSON action just to make it a little bit easier to work with and access the data within the JSON. So to get the schema, what you can do is you can run this flow. Obviously, if you're building this out, you're not going to have a complete flow. So before you add the pass JSON step, save and run the flow. Then you'll get the outputs of your get rows action and you can copy and paste those outputs into the JSON payload to generate from that sample there and that will produce the schema that you see in the box here. So that's a really nice and easy way to get that JSON schema because it's on the exact piece of data that you're going to be running and using. And of course the content here is the row data from the step before. It's that data that we've just got from Excel. Because in my scenario, I'm only interested in rows where the supplier status is equal to information needed. Now that I've done a pass JSON, the outputs of this are in array format. So I can go ahead and actually filter that array to look at whether the status is equal to information needed. So to check whether a filter array has brought back any results, you can use the length expression because if the length of the filter array is greater than zero, it means that there's at least one result there from the filter. But if it isn't greater than zero, it means there's no results and nothing else needs to be done and the flow can finish. However, if there are results, we can then go 
down the yes branch. Here we need to have an apply to each where we're going to loop through each result of our filtered array. Here we can then send an automated email to the primary contact. So the primary contact email address was a piece of information in the Excel. We can just say the subject is information needed. Now in the Excel, we do have a primary contact name column. However, this is the first name and the surname. But generally when you write out emails, you don't say, hi, Sophie Charwood. You would just say, hi, Sophie. So I've added an expression here to just trim the name up to just include the first name. Now I got this expression by using format by example. So I just gave it a few examples and it generated it for me. But essentially what it's doing is it's splitting the name at the first space. So when you use the split expression, the results come back as an array, an array of the text before the split, an array of the text after the split. So because we're only wanting the text before the split, so the first name before the space, we can then use the first expression, which is going to just grab that first piece of text and it all comes back as a string. And I've then just added in some text into the email body and added in the notes for supplier there so they can see what information is needed. So that's the flow. So let's run this and see what results we get. So the flow has run. So let's go ahead and check Outlook to see if an automated email has arrived. So we can see a new email has come in saying, hi, Jim, so only having the first name and with all the information and including the supplier notes. So in this video, we saw how you can start to get unstructured data from your Excel files into Power Automate, start using in your automated processes, using Encodian Flowers, get rows from Excel action. You can also use this action with structured data that is in table format too. So it's up to you and how your data lies within Excel. This was a simple example to show you how to use the action, how to get data into the action and how to use the output data from the action. If you have any questions regarding the Get Rows from Excel action or if you'd like to discuss any use cases further, please get in contact with us at Encodian or leave a comment down below. And as always, happy automating.